Welcome to Sincast, presented by CinemaSins. All right, everybody, welcome to the Sincast. This is Chris Atkinson from CinemaSins, joined as always by Jeremy Scott, the voice of CinemaSins. Hello. And Barrett Scher, music video sins writer. Howdy. And uh, today, guys, we're going to be talking about 1979. I love the smell of night palm in the morning. We're moving right along. Foot loose and fancy free. Chapter one. He adored New York City. To him, it was a metaphor for the decay of contemporary culture. You're out of order. The whole trial is out of order. Which is actually a really good year when you when you look at it. Thank um, God. It, especially the last when we went 77 and 78 weren't very good years at all. And then 79, just sort of like, we got to make up for that. Yeah, we got to figure yeah. out a way to do something better than what we did the last two years. Cause the last two years have been bullshit. So, um, 1979, um, <laughs> it has, uh, movies like alien came out. That mm-hmm. is an amazing movie. Mm-hmm. Apocalypse now came out in 1979. Um, Star Trek, the motion picture, which uh, yeah. is not a good movie. Um, <laughs> but it has that one guy from seven. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has, <laughs> it has that one guy who's been known for other things, uh, later in life. <laughs> Funny uh, that, this is just where my mind is today, I guess, with the, all the talk about the police songs. <laughs> yeah, and now I, I just so. immediately blurt out that guy from seventh heaven who <laughs> did yeah. appropriate things is in yeah. that movie. <laughs> yeah. He was around Jessica Beale. What could have happened? Um, <laughs> Um, so, uh, well, what else did, did sticks out to you in 1979, guys? Well, uh, I got to bring up, uh, the Muppet movie because mm, yes. it's, yeah, yeah. it's not only probably arguably still one of the best Muppet movies ever made, but it's the first of the era of Muppet movies and, um, uh, the songs are amazing and, uh, it's not the best movie of 79 by far, but mm-hmm. maybe the one I've seen the most, um, if I'm being honest. Uh, oh Yeah. <laughs> But uh, so I would I would mention that, uh, you know, we also had uh, Mad Max. Yeah, Mad Max came out. It wasn't quite the post apocalypse yet. It was just the apocalypse, I think. At that point. <laughs> just the regular yeah. version. Right. Yeah. Just the just the yeah, it was right at the moment that the post apocalypse was about to begin, whatever you want to call that. <laughs> the apocalypse, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, Mad Max came out. Um, what else? The movie, the music in the Muppet movie was fantastic. Like it, mm-hmm. it holds up everything. Rainbow Connection was in that, right? Yeah. 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 That's the first song. But this was a good year overall for like music in movies that were not necessarily musicals like The Life of Brian. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Life of Brian. Just, Which <laughs> – this right, right. random you know, musical number at the end of it always look on the bright side of life. Oh, it's so fantastic. They're all on crosses and everything singing, you know, uh, always look on the bright side of life. It's as, it's about as ironic of a song as you can as you can uh, see in a movie. Um, so yeah, what's what's funny? Take that snippet, FYI. It's so awesome. They're all on crosses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You definitely should take that out of context. Um, the uh, the the, the 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 life of Brian actually is more popular in Great Britain than it is here in uh, they like it we like Monty Python the Holy Grail best and they like Life of Brian best and I and, agree uh, with the Brits uh, yeah and there are some Americans who agree with uh, the Brits on that in God, fact so you'd funny. probably find quite a bit um, I I'm still partial Holy Grail only because I've pro- I probably saw, I saw it before. Life of Brian yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I, and Life of Brian was you know considered a, um, a blasphemous enough that it is so blasphemous <laughs> <laughs> that that um, you know want, trying to watch that as a kid and everything and going through you know church and stuff like that when I was a kid uh, it just didn't resonate the way it would have if I watched it you know when I was in my late twenties or early thirties or whatever but. You watch it now and, and and you just, you know, forget about all of that. It's a really good movie. And I probably would if I gave it enough shot, 
it would probably go over Holy Grail. But right now, Holy Grail is my favorite. I mean, it's a pretty good year for comedy with the Muppet movie and Life of Brian and The Jerk came oh, out. Oh, The Jerk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, and, man. Again, in and Justice for ways, All. That's a movie that just steps on all kinds of people's feelings, right? Like, <laughs> the Jerk is just wrong in a lot of ways. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and Justice for All. Uh, it's funny. I, I know you didn't mean it this way, but it, 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 we just said great gear for comedy. I, I meant it like that. It's just a beat oh, too okay. late. <laughs> okay. I just, just like, just didn't, I just didn't know. I was like, so yeah, that great comedy and justice for all, you know, I'm out of order. You're out of order. Yeah. I, I probably did laugh during that actually. You know, I think about it. Um, um, but, uh, you know, uh, best picture of 1979 was Kramer versus Kramer. Uh, yeah. it was a good movie. We were, we probably won't say that as our best movie in 1979 though. Um, oh, it's good. It's definitely uh, high quality. Yeah, good movie. Uh, Rocky Two came out in 1979. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the one that they were like, well, you know, we, we had a bad taste in our mouth that uh, Rocky didn't win that last one. So let's have him beat Apollo Creed's ass in the second one. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, let's throw in Mr. T. Yeah, exactly. Well, Mr. T is Rocky three, but um, oh. See, but but I I have a feeling that in Rocky two that you know the, at least the dream of Mr. T was probably around at the time. <laughs> there was an yeah. essence of Mr. T. There was an essence. It was it was still sort of messing around in the primordial ooze of where Mr. T came from. But uh, they were they thought yeah you know what it would make Rocky three better. We have just you know Mr. T going at it. You know we'll have that in a few years that'll be a, that'll be amazing um formative movie for me it's not good um was the black hole disney oh yeah, sci-fi yeah black space hole. Adventures. yes um, <laughs> and uh only because it really introduced me to sci-fi um you know i saw it at it it was probably the first like space sci-fi movie i ever saw um it's not worthy of inclusion in this debate but it's worthy of mention because i love it okay but well i mean it's something that i hear quite often from people our age you know it just came in that it came in at the right time uh uh, a lot of people uh, cite that as one of those early introductions into sci-fi and it's you know uh uh, important movie for them i saw that before i saw star wars i mean (laughs) yeah yeah so yeah um, another movie that came out in 1979, I know that Barrett really likes this one as well, uh, Manhattan. Well, Diana, Woody Allen, Woody Allen. Uh, really on a, a roll here in the late 70s with Annie Hall and Manhattan in between interiors, which I've talked about before, which <laughs> is just uh, dreadful. Uh, but um, but Manhattan is an, an amazing movie. Oh, yeah. You start from the, the opening shots with the Gershwin score and – the realization that this is actually going to be the whole thing's going to be in black and white and it's going to feature some uh, mild pedophilia between Woody- <laughs> looking between back and retrospect on this movie is uh, is uh, you know uh, maybe there were signs then a couple of uh, red flags yeah. <laughs> really got to cut this theme from today the rest of today's show yeah. bring up any more creepy sex stuff because it's well, just it's, it, we didn't do it it was it, Moody it, Allen it, it was the <laughs> 70s it was the 70s Jimmy Page was dating a 14 year old girl in the 70s mm, and really? everybody was over okay with it uh, that's um, wrong yeah yeah that it was the 70s man people didn't <laughs> people didn't give a shit that's why bad news bears came out nobody gave a shit um, um well for cultural impact i think at least it's worth mentioning um the warriors and caligula yeah yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, Caligula. Strangely enough, Chris's parents wouldn't let him watch The Life of Brian, but they would let him watch Caligula. <laughs> watch that on repeat. Um, I uh, did they you know, know what it was? We, did they think it was like some Julius Caesar thing? <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never seen Caligula, but oh, you, okay. but Barrett, uh, you've seen it. What do you think about Caligula? Oh, yeah, it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> it's so gross. <laughs> like there's just. Uh, ridiculous violence and bad acting and orgies and mm-hmm. not necessarily in that order, but it's yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't make you feel good after watching it. It's like Faces of Death or something like that. Oh, jeez, yeah. Every time I've heard of Caligula, I'm like, yeah, that's a movie I don't want to watch. <laughs> um, 
we had James Bond's foray into somewhat sci-fi with Moonraker, which is mm. not a good movie at all. But uh, but you, that's sort of how you you can prove that James Bond basically goes with the trends of the time. Yeah. You know, like uh, almost every time they they would come out with uh, a movie, now it's like, what's popular? Let's make a Bond version of that, and it's sort of like what they've been doing now with you know the you know, the born bornification of uh, of Bond. Um, uh, it, so that that came out not very good. The Amityville Horror came out this year. It's uh, it was a big huge hit. I don't like it very much though. <laughs> um, where do you a, stand on like, uh, being the Super Spielberg fans? Where do you guys stand on 1941? Oh man, yeah. it's a uh, that's a movie that I, I I don't think it's funny at all. And he got everybody from the time. You know, he just got everybody. But it's. It's a movie that get has a lot of like cult status now. And like people really like, oh, that movie got a bad rap or whatever. But I remember watching it and going, no, it it got exactly the rap it needed. Um, what do you guys think? I'm kind of eh. I think I've yeah, I'm it. the same way. But it's got a huge like cult following for some reason. I guess it's just because you know movies that sucked back then. Ha- all, you know, there's always like a a building groundswell of people who watch it over the years. And it's like, Oh, there's actually a lot of people who like that movie. Um, Currently 32% on rotten tomatoes, which is, I mean, it's gotta be the lowest for Spielberg ever, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Maybe. Unless it's, unless it's, uh, I mean, there could be something, I don't know, not even some of his m- most recent, uh, stuff like war horse. I bet war House, war horse. I bet even has like 70 or something like that. <laughs> even that does. Uh, um, I didn't see that movie. Is it basically the Budweiser commercial? I think it is like yeah. a horse. Oh yeah. The There's a scene where the horse goes out into the middle of the of the battle zone between the Americans and the Germans and gets stuck and an American and a German help each other to get the the, the horse free. Oh my god. It is as sugary saccharine sweet as you can get in a Spielberg movie. Jesus. Um we you mentioned the warriors and one thing that I wanted to bring up with the warriors is that uh, Walter Hill directed that movie and he couldn't have had a better year. Uh, he directed that and he was a producer on alien and oh, wow. he did that at the age of 37, which is uh, pretty incredible. Um, mm-hmm. So that was another thing about 1979. Another thing I wanted to throw in there was Norma Ray. Uh, uh-huh. Norma Ray came out then uh, Sally field, really good in that movie. Um, but you know, anyway, I, yeah, I, I guess we can go to what we would pick. Um, uh, Jeremy, you want to start us off? Oh, I'm alien all the way. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It w- when I'm asked what my favorite horror movie is, it's always either The Shining or Alien. Mm-hmm. Um, and I consider Alien a horror movie. It's probably more of a thriller in most people's eyes. I don't know, but uh, it's scary as f in several. Yeah, um, and you know, saw it at that right, you know, preteen age to you know soil myself and. Uh, it's just if you've never seen it, it's fantastic. It's got several great scares. Um, it's there's a great mystery and uh, Jesus. It's maybe one of my favorite movies ever. It's, it's definitely in my top ten. Yeah, it uh, it it does exactly what horror movies should do. It it always the alien is always out there. He can always yeah. he can come out at any point. And they're they're just in that they're in that enclosed space and that's real you know uh, claustrophobic and all that and and the scene with John Hurt and the uh, and the alien and uh, popping out of his chest at dinner that none of the none of the actors knew that was going to happen so all of all wow. of yeah all of their insane. yeah Screaming. it's absolutely insane like. Um, uh, that Ridley Scott basically told, you know, John Hurt, like, and I'm not going to tell him, you don't tell him either, you know? And it's like, <laughs> so like that, <laughs> that happens. And the, the reactions of the, the cast are real. I love stuff so, like that. Oh yeah. It's fantastic. Uh, it's also, a, uh, it's also going to be my pick. Um, uh, alien just gets everything right. 
and it's it's everything that you know you want to see in a movie. I know I, I ha- Apocalypse Now would be my like sort of my number two here. I I know Jeremy, you probably you don't like that movie, do you? No, I don't. I'm yeah. not trying to beat up on people who do. It's just not it's not my thing, man. Um, Apocalypse Now is a movie that it kind of like how Nashville was for me when I first watched it. I was like, eh, okay. I mean, it's a little bit just too crazy, but that, I mean, I know that's the point. It is crazy. It's crazy, but you know, it's a, it's a Vietnam movie that had not, um, they hadn't made that yet. You know, like everything about Vietnam before then was the, the effects of coming home from Vietnam and all that other type of stuff. This actually just sort of took you in and said, uh, welcome to the craziness that was Vietnam. Um, and you know, and it, it, you know, you have Brando being his Brando self is like prime, prime weirdo Brando and that Brando ist. <laughs> yes. It's Brando ist. Um, and, uh, you had Dennis Hopper being his hopper ist. Um, it was just, it was one of, it's one of those movies and, and it took me, I've seen the movie now like 10 times probably. Um, it took me a while to really, really, really like it. Uh, but that said, Alien still my pick. Mm. Well, that means Barrett, you're screwed. Yeah, wah, wah. it don't matter what you like. You Barrett, throw it away on something else. So you want to join the crowd? Uh, I love Alien too, but my pick would be for Manhattan. Even though I don't want to pile on the Woody Allen picks, but Chris is right. It was a terrific run from 77 to 79 to to do these landmark movies uh, with yeah. Manhattan and Annie Hall. So that's my that's my favorite movie. It's a movie I've watched behind maybe Life of Brian the the most times uh, from seventy nine. So that would probably be my pick. But I number two definitely would be Apocalypse Now just for the how bonkers it is. But uh, yeah, so the pick go, does go to Alien. Yeah, right, absolutely. Yay. And I have no problem with you picking Manhattan. I mean, that I mean, if it was one, that's one another one of those deserted island type things, you know. Like you got, you know, uh, you only have Manhattan to watch. Well, okay, that's, yeah. a, that's a pretty good deal. <laughs> um, all right, so today, guys, we're going to be talking about our movie going experiences. Why don't you just tell me the name of the movie you selected? <laughs> You ain't never seen my movies. A little bit different from uh, our our theater experiences, although I think s- there's going to be a little bit of overlap on yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Um, but uh, but uh, I'm going to let you guys take it away. Barrett, you got a good movie going experience? Yeah, you know, I guess I should start off not by the most salacious one, and just kind of the most fun one for me is uh, when when we were in high school. Uh, me and my group of friends were, were just so obsessed with movies and even TV at that point. There was no DVR. There was no back in my day. Uh, <laughs> you know, there was there was no TiVo. Uh, so it, it was appointment viewing, basically. So um, anytime we would get tickets to a movie, typically it'd be a seven o'clock on a on a Friday and everybody was doing things after school. So it took a lot of maneuvering to get everybody together to go out to see uh, these these movies. And it would always end up in a late last minute rush in whoever was driving and we get to the theater right on time. And we were going to see in this particular thing, Star Trek First Contact, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which, which ended up being, you know, uh, not, not the best thing in the world. But uh, oh, we had a friend like that, that was, you know, well, we had a friend that was a huge Trekkie and uh, he definitely, definitely wanted to get there right at the, the, t- the time that the movie started, even Uh, for the the previews and everything. So we did this all out rush. We got like six or seven people together. I was driving a Ford Aerostar. We literally almost died 12 times in that trip (laughs) over there. (laughs) And that's okay. So that was on the trip over. We were going Bob and it was horribly unsafe for, for a mediocre movie. Uh, But we were, you know, we finally made it to the, (laughs) to the parking lot. And John, my friend who was really into Star Trek, he said, just let me out. I'm going to, you know, he was going to do like a shoulder roll out of the the car or something (laughs) like that. (laughs) And so, you know, I stopped and I said, all right, you know, go on and get, get us seats and stuff like that. And he took off for the theater and he got hit by a car. No! No! Oh my God! No way! (laughs) He was on his way. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm supposing he was okay. <laughs> He's fine. <laughs> or else this this laughter would be dark. <laughs> oh, but yeah, he, uh, he and he was a trooper, man. He just got back up and <laughs> He's like, fuck it, Star Trek first contact. First contact! Oh, yeah, first contact with a car, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so that just kind of heightened our, our senses for the rest of the movie. So that was a lot oh of fun. <laughs> That's way, wait, so, so, like, he gets hit with the car, and then what? He slides then, the fuck off of it is what he does. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, man. And, and did the g- guy in the car, like, stop and say, yo, <laughs> yeah, he was you like, okay? Is that, guy, is that guy okay? He was looking at me. I was like, I, I guess he is. He went into the theater. Yeah, me, I'd be having, I'd have that guy send, uh, fill out an injury form or something before <laughs> before letting him run off like that. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what? If you if you suddenly come up with a broken leg and, and, and everything, you're going to tell me that you were okay at the time of the accident he may yeah. as well have been on pcp Jesus. yeah just like uh lance hendrickson says that uh, arnold schwarzenegger is in the terminator when you know he smashes through the window <laughs> hey he's probably on pcp this is the way it comes down to uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right jeremy oh what's your stories <laughs> all right uh the first one i'm going to tell um a lot of these that I'm going to tell are going to be similar in the fact that we, we got a group of people together to go see a movie. So in college, my brother was a few years older than me and uh, it just happened that he was a senior while I was a freshman. And so any opportunity I got to hang out with my brother and his friends, I took because they were all seniors. And so he tells me, we're going to go see this new John Singleton movie, higher learning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> And you know, I'm, I'm right in the phase of, you know, I'm, I'm, I've just been exposed to film. I'm going to everything I can. I'm reading Premiere Magazine. I'm like, this is the guy who made Boys in the Hood. I'm going to go see this movie. And I, don't, I didn't think anything at all. So there's four of us. <clears throat> it's probably important to note that we're all white. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to the showing and it's like a 9 p.m. showing, I think. I don't know. It was a, a small theater, like a hundred seater, um, sold out. All black people except for us. We're in the fourth row, uh, right on the aisle. And this movie, if you haven't seen it, is all about racial tension, right? So it, basically, it just goes mm-hmm. back and forth between black people bitching about white people and white people bitching about black people. There's like Nazis in this movie um, and like black power people. So there's this one scene where Ice Cube is given this black power speech to all these other black people. And this woman behind us goes, mm-hmm, preach. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was an uncomfortable five minutes while that scene continued to play out. Um, just because we didn't, I felt like if I did any kind of movement, um, it would be interpreted <laughs> wrong. <laughs> so then later in the movie, like Michael Rappaport is the, the the white guy that the Aryans are trying to recruit, and they're giving this big "We hate black people" speech. And my brother, my brother leans over to me and he goes, "Don't say mm-hmm, preach." <laughs> 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 and uh, it didn't need to be said. I wasn't about to say that. Um, anyway, and that's also a memorable movie-going experience for an unrelated reason, because I found a $50 bill on the sidewalk outside after nice. the movie. Nice. And one of my Damn. brother's friends took it from me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Basically ran to it before I could get there and wouldn't give it to me, even though I spotted it and pointed at it and oh, started What a dick. It. It kind of, it's funny, just as an aside, you know, I went to game three of that Predator Sharks game. And like uh, at, they were announcing the stars of the game and everything, and uh, James Neal comes out and he throws a stick. Like it was like a three. It was like a row uh, in front of us, and um, wow. and uh, and there was a guy who uh, who wasn't even he didn't even have seats there. He just kind of meandered his way down there during the stars of the game, and uh, he he grabbed a hold of the stick, and another guy who was who was sitting there grabbed a hold of the stick, and they were both hugging it. Just like there, it was like hands on a hard body. They weren't like they're trying to figure out like you know, like one who's going to be the guy who ends up saying, "Okay, this isn't worth it." You know, I saw on Reddit a couple of weeks ago a GIF. Uh, it's uh, they call it the most Canadian thing ever, and it's two kids on the front row on the glass at a hockey game, both trying to give the puck to the other one, like <laughs> the exact opposite of what you're describing. You're like, no, you can take. No, you can take. No, you can take. <laughs> All right, Chris, you got a story for us? Uh, okay, so mine mostly comes down to uh, just 
moments where you know either I've said something or or somebody has said something in the theater. Now, my I've never said anything out loud like George Costanza and Seinfeld, but mm-hmm. um, but I remember uh, watching the movie in the bedroom with our friend Jonathan. Um, and we went to a theater like during the, it was like the middle of the day. And like, um, I don't think, I think it was just us two. And maybe like there was, there had, there was a different, definitely a couple of other people in there or else this, you know, this wouldn't make any difference at all. But, uh, there were other, cu- a couple other people in there and watching it. There's a scene where Tom Wilkinson like basically just starts undressing because he's got to do this like really important thing that I won't I won't get into spoiler territory on. But he starts undressing. Now Tom Wilkinson, I, I immediately when I saw him undressing in the scene, I immediately thought of the Full Monty because he's in that movie. <laughs> and uh, I turned to my friend Jonathan, to our friend Jonathan, and uh, and and I and I say I whisper to him, "You can leave your hat on." <laughs> and Jonathan could not stop laughing. He was just <laughs> he's, he's he's having to hold it in because there's other people in the theater and everything. He's like, he's like Jesus Christ. He's like, what you have to, why'd you say that? You know, blah, 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 wow. you know, doing that. And and I've 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 always had that like horror. Uh, I'll say stuff like to somebody, whisper it to them real quick, just before they're, you know, they'll be, it'll be in an inappropriate situation. I like, I did that once with my brother when we were at a pizza place and I was, and I, and I was like, and I was like, take a look at this girl's mouth just before she turned and smiled at him. <laughs> and he just started busting out. Laughing. Oh, so shit. I've always had that weird, you know, thing, whatever, but yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, laughing in church and all that type of stuff. You can't stop once you, once you start reading, realizing that you need to stop and everything. So that's yeah. one of them. So I went to see Spider-Man two in the theater and I, as much as I talked shit about it before, I had a very nice experience uh, with watching Spider-Man two. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, it's a fun movie. That's a movie. And part of the reason for bringing this up was to see kind of like what you guys thought about the ex- experience of movies. What's good to see in a full theater versus a small theater and that kind of thing. And Spider-Man two is great to see in a full theater. Um, yeah. And so when I went to see it, I was kind of in, in the, you know, they, they got the front section, they got the back section. I was in the back section towards the front of that section. And I was looking down and I saw this, this, this woman that was, it looked like at, at one point during the movie, like she was just kind of laughing. Like she was just kind of uh, convulsing and, and it wasn't during a funny part. So I guess it was just like something that was going on in her head or whatever, that kind of thing. And, but she like didn't stop for a while. And I was like, what the hell's going on? And eventually, like, it, it looked like, you know, her head kind of dropped down a little bit. And it was like, is she getting sick or something like that? And there was a little bit of a commotion around her, like around the adjacent seats and everything. And I was like, ah, I hope she's doing OK. And eventually, like, she gets up to, uh, to to leave, like in the middle of the movie. And, you know, this is like right in my field of vision. So that's why uh, I, I noticed all of it. The the two guys that were at the, the seats right next to her also stood up and went out with her and they both had massive boners. What? <laughs> and it turns out that she had been giving them both hand jobs. Oh my, oh, my <laughs> oh my God. And there was like a smattering of applause. Around <laughs> the, the, the small area around her. And uh, yeah, so she must've like left to finish the job. No, I guess so. <laughs> Oh my god! So, so she was doing the double handy. I guess so. Yeah, and that's why it was looking like she was convulsing rhythmically. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to follow that story. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Spider Man Two, man, and <laughs> and of course, all I could think of any time like he ejaculates out of his wrist, like I was just thinking of. <laughs> I was thinking about that girl. Of course. <laughs> I was going to tell a different story, but because of the story you just told, I'm going to tell this one. Um, I went to see Schindler's List. Oh, yeah. Um, with uh, this girl that I never officially dated, but we just sort of dated here and there. And uh, one of her friends <laughs> and this other guy. And it was a sold out show. Um, and I, I was legitimately there to see a powerful, disturbing movie made by 
you know, Spielberg. I, w- I was not expecting our double date partners to put their hands down each other's pants. No. <laughs> what? During the little girl in the red jacket scene? What? Oh. I'm dead serious. There's oh my sex God. acts going on. There's during so many that wrong scene. things happening there. Right to the left of me. And it gave me a very unique... Uniquely disturbing experience watching that. <laughs> Everybody who watches it gets disturbed, but not quite on the level that I did because <laughs> I had that and that going on. Um, I mean, it was, it's bad enough for the whole Holocaust thing, but now you've got to associate it with. I mean, oh boy, it was really. Um, <laughs> That was, it, was, it was inappropriate. It's sort Whoa. of like that Seinfeld episode making out during Schindler's List always resonated with me because I had seen worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's going, going down the pants. Uh, yeah. I'm telling you, no shame at all. There was even a little exit door light behind us because we were in the back and it was, it was like you could totally tell hands were down pants. Oh, my oh God. My. Wow. Wow. And they, needless to say, I didn't get any action that night. Uh, <laughs> For yeah. good reasons. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the power of teenage hormones, to block out an entire six million uh, <laughs> genocide. person genocide. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I am in the dark, and I am <laughs> away from my parents right now. I like this girl. The hands are going where the hands are going. Yeah. Yep. There's exactly. nothing we can do about this. <laughs> um, I, I I don't have anything like that. Most of, most of the, uh, like, sex stories that I could share are, are like stuff that I just saw when I was a projectionist. Oh, okay. um, uh, but uh, I'm going to go a different direction here. Um, the, you know, you were talking about how watching, you know, movies are different depending on uh, if you have a big house, you know, you have a sold out crowd or if you have, you know, hardly anybody. Now I watched most of the movies that I watched were, you know, by myself at like midnight. Right. Um, and everything. And sometimes a movie has a certain mood and structure that, you know, when you're watching it at midnight, it gives you a different outlook on that movie. And, uh, I have not seen this movie since, and I'm sure it's bad, but uh, a lady in the water, I had a really good experience with, uh, (laughs) watching it at midnight because, you know, it's, it's a, a quote unquote bedtime story and everything and just all the weirdness and everything. And I think I was pretty tired from a day of work <laughs> and all this other stuff. And I like Paul Giamatti. Um, uh, it comes down to the, it just came down to the, I'm really getting into this. I really like this movie. And I remember <laughs> even writing a good review about it and everything, you know, I was like this, I, I just guess I was just in the right mood to, you know, cause I wasn't watching it with, you know, uh, 15 disappointed people all at once. Right. Um, you know, because chances was, are they were going to be disappointed. Oh, it was that's that, and that's a, probably the most that movie ever had in one auditorium was fifteen. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was just one of those movies. Like it, it's, and I do remember there's at least one part. I was telling Barrett about this. There is at least one part that I remember about Lady in the Water that made me laugh, and it still makes me laugh today because Bob Balaban's character is basically M Night Shyamalan's. Like I hate critics, so I'm going to make a guy who just hates stuff in my movie, and he's going to be, you know, I'm going to put Bob Balaban in it, and um, and there's a part in there where uh, Balaban, uh, I think Giamatti goes and says, "What did you think of the movie?" And he's like, "Sucked." <laughs> That's all he says. <laughs> Sucked. And then and then he goes into why he hated it and all that. You know, it's, it's why Lady in the Water is somewhat uh, is well, somewhat I, was unbearable to a lot of critics was that character and how M. Night was like sort of channeling his frustration through that character. And everything. And, you know, M. Night's always doing stuff like that, you know, like making things personal in his art. And uh, and so, like, you know, that's why a lot of people found that movie insufferable. But, you know, at midnight, after a long day of work, I got into it. I got into the vibe. I guarantee you if I popped it in now and watched it, I'd be like, yeah, I can see why people really hated this movie. It's kind of like, uh, it, just as an aside, it's kind of like how... When me and my brother uh, rented the movie Saving Silverman, and <laughs> yeah, and 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 I, I we we went. I was you know it was basically like we're gonna rent a movie and we're gonna get drunk and watch it, and so 
uh, I had not been super sloppy drunk at the time. I think I was 25 when I watched this, watched this movie. Um, and, uh, I was, I was like drinking like, you know, rum and Coke and a tequila shot. So it was like rum and Coke, <laughs> then a tequila shot. And then, all right, I'm ready for another rum and Coke. And so you start, I started to drink the rum and Coke, starting to drink a rum and Coke and everything. And then it's like, all right, we're going to follow that with another tequila shot. And then like, what I could started go drinking, wrong? Oh, yeah, exactly. And well, and I, and, and the third rum and Coke, I was like, oh, well, you know, this isn't so bad. I'm not getting too terribly drunk. It feels pretty good. And you don't realize the delay factors of alcohol a lot of times when you're like, you know, doing that type of stuff. So you drink a, I drank a rum and Coke, did another tequila shot. Wow. So. I was at three and then I got to the fourth one and I actually did four of each of these things. Um, I had gotten to the, we had gotten to the point of watching this movie and we found it so hilarious. Like it was the funniest movie we could possibly be watching. It was, it, I, you know, I mean, it's not a new thing to be talking about how you're inebriated or intoxicated or whatever you want to say and watch something and think it's the best thing ever. But I really, I mean, typically in times where I've been drunk, I could still discern that something sucked. I could not in this one. And we're just laughing our asses off in this movie. And then I remember like, you know, I, and I did pass out. I passed out and I had to get taken out to the porch or whatever. It was like January weather and like <laughs> wearing sh- t-shirt and shorts and everything and not even feeling it, how cold it was. And like, the next morning, uh, recovering and everything, I was like, I'm going to pop this movie back in. And we were watching it, and it's like, oh, this movie sucks. This movie's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one about Neil Diamond, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, sort of. I mean, it's it's about... It's not about Neil Diamond. It features yeah, the Neil Diamond they have tribute to, band. Yeah, there's a, there's a, I think there's a point where they go and try to get Neil Diamond, but like it's Jason Biggs is falling in love with Amanda Peet, I believe, and they're about to get married. And uh, Jack Black and I uh, can't remember the other guy are trying Steve to Zahn? save him. Huh? Steve Zahn, right? Yeah, Steve Zahn. That's right. Uh, are trying to save him from this marriage and everything. So um, that's the saving Silverman of the title. But um, yeah, I I just remember there's a scene in there where like, there's like a fantasy sequence of like karate or something like that. (laughs) And like, and like the guy and the, and whoever is in that sequence dies. And the ref is like, dead. (laughs) (laughs) He just kept rewinding it and watching it over and over over again we could not get over how funny that was and that that is pretty funny but like everything else we were laughing at was not anyway uh barrett you got another one no yeah talk about seeing a, a bad movie in a fun context everybody shits all over this movie rightfully so but uh the phantom menace when it came out in 1999 right was yeah. a genuine phenomenon outside yeah. of obviously the uh the the movie itself which was a big turd <laughs> but you know i've got other friends that, that are really into star wars i mean like super into star wars and mm-hmm. now like everybody's into star wars and you know everybody was dressed like kylo ren to go see the force awakens when it came out and blah 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 but back in you know 17 years ago um you know it wasn't necessarily fashionable to stand in line all day for a star wars movie and, you know, at that point, it had been a long time in between, you know, episodes there. And so uh, a buddy of mine got me got us movie tickets uh, to see the midnight showing at the Hollywood 27, actually, mm-hmm. um, uh, in, which in, I was there for. I actually was there as a as a customer, uh, not, yeah. a, not a worker. Well, and were you in I line? You weren't in line, were you? Well, no, I had a friend who <laughs> stayed in line for me. <laughs> and then, uh, then I got the ticket. That's how I got that. So, so you were at that midnight showing? I was nice. Jeremy, were you there? Read it and started that projector. I definitely worked. We ran them 24 hours for like the first week. Yeah. Which, you know, I had gotten hired at Hollywood 27, I believe either that day or like maybe a couple of days before. And I think I just said, I can't work this weekend. Nice. And I avoided that 24 hour thing. And then I got into it. So like, uh, yeah, I, I I got to avoid that anyway, Barrett. That's crazy. I actually didn't know either of you at that point. And we were all in the same place. We were all in the same place. That's really crazy. Yeah. No, it was, it was, 
fuck ton of fun though. Oh like, yeah, everybody was getting along. I've never really waited in 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 line for like a Black Friday thing or a movie or even concert tickets or anything like that. So I don't really. This is my only experience. And we had placeholders too, so we were coming and going. We actually went to see another movie go while we were waiting ah, yes. uh, awesome. for which is a great movie yeah for we were waiting for star wars so and you know it, it was just it was a great time we went to see the movie at midnight just the general experience and and the ambiance and everything it was just i, I did not want to hate that movie as much as i ended up hating it uh, which I think, Chris, you may have mentioned this on like the second podcast we ever did. You were like, you know, you watch the, the, the Phantom Menace and you're like, well, maybe I can talk myself into that after the first time. <laughs> yeah. But then you watch it again and you're like, oh, I can't talk myself into that. Honestly, I only actually no. watched that movie twice in 24 hours because mm. I saw it at the midnight show and then I saw it at my old theater that I had quit um, the next day. And I remember after watching it the first time, yeah, I was totally in denial. It was like, it was like, ah, that was pretty good. You know, you remember some things that were good. Uh, but yeah, and then I watched it the second time. I was like, I've got to think about this for a bit. This isn't, <laughs> I don't think it's that good. I really don't. It's weird. It, maybe my expectations were too high. By the way, no. we now casually mentioned the movies with my two favorite uses of the song Magic Carpet Ride. <laughs> um, no, Star Trek First Contact. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not even a little bit joking. I've had this debate with myself regularly about which one of those I think is a better use of that song because they're both yeah. awesome. Okay. I say go because just the way they use it and how the it car jumping, the yeah. car f jumping over the like, you know, hill or whatever and all that. I love yeah. But it. the other one, first contact is James Cromwell. Right. And, and Jonathan, yeah, he does it off in the room. Yeah. Yep. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> anyway. All right. So, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to use my friend's name because I don't want him to think I'm telling this story to embarrass him. But, um, one of the most memorable movie experiences for me was a, a triple date, um, when we went to see um, Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes. And mm -hmm. this was in the height of my Claire Danes um, obsession. Yeah. Even though I was on a date. Um, and this was back in the day, kids, when every movie wasn't available, you know, a mile away from your house. Like, we had two theaters in town, but we still had to drive 45 minutes to a different town to see this movie. Mm -hmm. um, sold out. Raucous crowd. Teenagers. All the people it was targeted at <clears throat> were in college at this point. <laughs> And my, my friend, this is, now I'm going to out him. This is the same guy that I used to mispronounce movies to the box office. When we were, <laughs> two tickets for Speckies, please. So we, we were just in this phase in our life where we did weird shit for our own amusement. So he, he gets the idea to stand up. He goes, watch this. And he runs all the way down to the front of the auditorium. This is before um, the lights had gone down. There's no trailers or anything running. And, uh, and he goes, does anyone here know? What TV show Leonardo DiCaprio got his start on? And it's like a wave of, like, you're an idiot. Like, a couple people <laughs> yell out um, growing pains, which is the answer. Uh, but most people are either booing or sit the fuck down or what the hell are you doing? And he comes back and the movie, like, the, the trailers start rolling and I lean over and I go, thanks, now everyone hates us. <laughs> <laughs> so we watched the movie and we're leaving and in the parking lot, he goes, remember when I ran down in the front of the auditorium and completely embarrassed myself? That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and it made for a very memorable date, lively conversation at dinner. And uh, I think I dated that girl for a while, but um, I was glad that night not to be the one embarrassing myself. I'm sure there are plenty of times where I, I took that man. Well, that and spoken like a true actor, I mean, there's a guy who, who um, you know, you want to have that don't give a fuck in a performer, you know? So, yeah, yeah so, absolutely. so, uh, I, I, I enjoy that, but you're right at, at the expense of, of everybody hating you in the auditorium. <laughs> he goes up and does that. You know, uh, I think it's funny that like, that's the question that he asked. Well, yeah. it's, I mean, <laughs> I guess you could conceive that, you know, maybe one or two other people might know that. I, I think it was more common knowledge than he realized. I just want to know what, what he thought was going to happen. Right? Like, <laughs> like everybody's like, no. Uh, well, he, he tells the answer. Are they going to clap? What's going to, what is this turning into afterwards? Well, and, 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 
And unfortunately, in in this age, 20 years later, if somebody runs up to the front of the auditorium and starts oh, yelling Jesus. anything, you you can forget about it. Yeah. Somebody's um, going to call security immediately. Yeah. Um, I, I have a very, very minor story, but I just I think it's funny just when people say stuff out loud in auditoriums and everything, especially if it's like what you're thinking. Um, in Back to the Future 2... Uh, I went to go see this at a, you know, uh, future place of employment, the Williamson Square 8, which no longer exists. Um, uh, Back to the Future 2 has the scene at the very end where, you know, Doc's in the flying DeLorean and Marty's yelling up to him and all sort of stuff. And then lightning hits the DeLorean and it just uh, disintegrates in the air. So there's like a pause uh, and I'm in a sold out auditorium and there's this just like, you know, oh, my God, it, the lightning struck it. Doc, Doc must be dead. But even though everybody knew that there was a Back to the Future three with Doc, um, mm-hmm. you know, coming out <laughs> like in six months after this or whatever. <laughs> but it's fun, but we're all like we're all like just in silence and everything. And somebody just goes. Oh shit. <laughs> and, just, and, just, and that just broke everybody up in the auditorium because it's like, you know, it's what we were thinking. It was not what we were all thinking at the time. So this makes me want to throw in, I'm just going to t- tack on another story. We were in sixth grade and our teacher decided to show us, um, what's that? Uh, Camelot, that musical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when Lancelot, Starts making out with Guinevere. The sixth grader in my class stands up and puts his arm in the air and yells, Bury it! (laughs) (laughs) Got suspended for like a week. (laughs) Well... (laughs) <laughs> I, I took you. I, like, I didn't. I don't think to this day I even understood exactly. Like I think he means bury your face in her cleavage. But right, right. I'm not entirely sure, but it was. So, it meant something to him. Damn it. And, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and if we're, you know, that reminds me of a of a story of like when I was in middle school and we were watching of mice and men, oh. and I believe it's the Randy Quaid version. Um, anyway, I'm pretty sure Randy Quaid was in this. If he's not, then <laughs> who cares? He's crazy and he's in Canada anyway. No, he, he's, um, he's come back. He got arrested. Oh, he got arrested. Good. Um, but, uh, there we're watching of mice and men and, uh, and there's, you know, the, if you're familiar with the story at the, at the end, they, uh, you know, um, what are the two main characters? Is it Lenny and George Lenny and George? Yeah. They take, uh, they take Lenny, you know, to go see the rabbits and everything that whole scene. And, um, and like, so the, there's a point where the, the camera cuts to the gun or whatever, or it, it just, the cameras camera just sort of moves away from, uh, his head and you see the gun and you're like, Oh no. And you know, and, and the, and there's, you just hear a gunshot. And one of my friends in the middle of class, <laughs> guts up he get he jumps out of his desk and he goes mama and he runs out of the honest he runs out of the classroom (laughs) he did it just for effect he did not he knew that was coming and he knew what was he was getting into it was not like a a reaction of you know oh my god that happened because he knew it was going to happen he just jumped up and said, mama for laughs and like, <laughs> and just nice. ran out. Of, and of course he got in trouble for it, of course. Um, but uh, totally worth it. Totally worth it. All right. We, uh, we got time for a couple questions here. You guys want to d- dive in? Let's do it. Question. Question. I got something to say. I want the truth. I am listening. This first one isn't really a question. It's a, a topic that we don't think is as easily stretched to a full show. So we are pretending somebody asked it, okay. um, but, uh, Hilar- unexpectedly hilarious moments in serious scenes in movies. Um, and this is one that I thought of when I was watching um, Gone Baby Gone, um, mm-hmm. which is a fantastic movie, and it's super deep and heavy. Uh, and at the end, uh, one of the bad guys is about to shoot the other bad guy who's spilling his guts about what happened. And before he can, the bartender in this Boston bar shoots him in the back. And he runs out, and one of the good guys... Uh, Chases after him. I'm trying not to spoil too much of the movie, but chases him down the street and into this warehouse and up onto this roof. And he pulls his gun and he's 
going around the edge of the wall, and finally he sees him slumped over against this air conditioner or something. <laughs> he walks up. The guy goes, that bartender went fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> and every time I see it, because it, it's such a heavy movie, and I, I'm just never expecting levity in that moment. And it, it's partly the way that he, Ed Harris reads the line. But uh, anyway, that, that, that spurred the topic of uh, unexpected laughs in uh, action or drama movies. So you guys got any examples? Um, yeah. Um, the thing that I thought of when this question came up was the, um, was in children of men, which is, uh, just a badass movie. Um, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's so many great action scenes in it. And at the, um, at the end of children of men after one, another great one, um, Clive Owen and the pregnant woman are on a boat, and uh, Clive Owen's basically on the verge of death and everything. And he just, he, he looks up, he's exhausted. He tells the pregnant woman, hell of a day. <laughs> <laughs> nice. and it, it just, it, it's funny because it's just, you know, it, it, there's so much intensity in that movie. And then just to have him just kind of be like hell of a day, you know, <laughs> is a perfect break to that. You know, just to, to piggyback on that, Clive Owen had a great run in the early to mid 2000s, right? Yeah, yeah. He had a great run. Yeah, like he did. Children of Men and uh, Closer. Yeah, he's great in Closer. He is terrific in Closer. Uh, he's the best part of that movie, I think. And oh, like, he's definitely the best. I mean, Inside that, Man and Born Identity. Like, yeah. I mean, just that movie he run. did with Jennifer Aniston. Um, Disclosure? Yeah. No, it was called, um, not Disclosure. It's Derailed is what it's called. Derailed. But he's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Closer, he just, and especially his dialogue with Jude Law at the end of Closer, it just is so, it's so mean and perfect. Um, I, it's, it's one of those things. I just, I always have to think back to, to that movie. It's so, he's so good at it. You know, closer, it's a, it's a really adult movie. Yeah. You know? like, and not like, you know, adult, like it's, it's profane or anything like that. Like, it's just like a, a, a good, like grown up, like serious movie. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But it's like, uh, it just it reminds me of like when Jude Law is like, he's like t t telling him like, you wouldn't have even met Julia, you know, like the Julia Roberts character. You wouldn't have even met her if it wasn't for me. And he goes, I know. Thanks. <laughs> 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 it's like, and it just, it just <laughs> stuff like that. People are he's trying to hurt him and he's like, nope, you know, you're not going to be able to hurt me on this. Yeah. Um, well, I got a soft topic, but my, my pick for this is very cheesy. It, it's the one that stuck with me from my youth was the steel magnolias uh, scene uh, where uh, Sally field uh, loses her daughter. She, she gets, she freaks out at the funeral. It's Julia, strangely enough, Julia Roberts again. And she freaks out at the, the funeral and starts saying, you know, I just want to hit something. I just want to, you know, I just want to hit something. And I think it's uh, Olympia Dukakis who holds out, uh, she holds out Shirley MacLaine. She says, well, hit Weezer. That's her name of her character. You're like, hit Weezer. And uh, it completely breaks the tension. And, you know, Sally Field just starts, you know, collapsing to laughter and everything. And <laughs> it's, a, it's a really good scene. That's a, that's a good movie. Um, you, uh, you know, um, good, sap, good sappy movie. Yeah. Another one. Um, I don't think we have time for another question, so I'll just throw out another moment that I like if you guys don't care. <laughs> Speaking of Schindler's List, as we did earlier, um, which is, you know, Ray Fiennes is in this movie and was sort of his breakout role. And he's fantastic. Um, he's playing basically the devil, um, Eamon Goth or whatever, however you say his name. And he just kills people for fun. He's a terrible, terrible human being. So I'm not trying to make him look good. Um, but in that opening scene with him, when they're driving him in the convertible through the town and got that, they got all the, the Jewish prisoners lined up on, on the side of the road. And I think there's even some piles of bodies and whatnot. And they're trying to, in their own way, show off all this work they've done and what the situation is. And they, and, and they say, any questions? And this line always makes me laugh. And he goes, yeah, well, I just top down. I'm fucking freezing. <laughs> 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 and yeah. just, the first time I saw that movie, again, in the theater with the people who were doing bad things, at, that still made me laugh out loud. And <laughs> every time I see it again, I don't feel like I should be, you know, saying, watch Schindler's Lift 
for laughs, but um, and, <laughs> but that that line and that his that's what his focus is, right? I don't care about any of this crap. I'm cold. Get me. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was uh, thinking about another one on this was um was hey, the movie Heist, the David Mamet Heist. Oh yeah, um has a moment where Ricky J is um he's he's one of our he's one of our heroes i guess he's one of our protagonists or whatever even though that movie is filled with like you know twists and turns and and double crosses and stuff um but uh but ricky j there's a point where he's surrounded by a bunch of bad guys and he knows he's gonna die um you know they're like he he's he's like it's a great day for a race and he's like and then and they're like what He's like, what do you, what, what kind of race? And he's like, the human race. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a great line. It's a very Mamedian line. Um, uh, and it's always, it's always, so that's a, just a fun movie in general. All right, guys. Well, that's the Sincast for today. Uh, if you have any comments, go to SoundCloud and sound off and tell us how, how much of idiots we are, or just tell us how much you love us, which we love, obviously. We can't get enough of that. Uh, <laughs> go to SoundCloud. Give your, like, opinion, man, mm-hmm. and, um, and uh, that'll be good. So, but uh, that's the that's the uh, syncast for this week. Uh, signing off. This is Chris Atkinson with Jeremy Scott and Barrett Share. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Comment on our episodes on our SoundCloud page. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. And be sure to visit cinemasins.com. Like, Don't Stand So Close to Me is really disgusting if you actually pay attention to it. Oh, those, yeah. Because it's about a <laughs> pedophile teacher. And, uh, <laughs> wow, and I did not know that. Oh, no, no, really? Totally no, I never, I never paid attention to those <laughs> lyrics, except for the, the chorus to sing it. <laughs> then, then they even name check Nabokov. So <laughs> <laughs> just like that old man in that, in that uh, book by Nabokov. Lolita. <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> God, that's another one. God, you don't, yeah, you don't have to do this shit. I appreciate <laughs> it. After I fucked you. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> that you did it with me. But now that you've done me, you should yeah, be done. But then I realized you shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> <laughs>